The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Well, let's take a look at the grain market action on Monday. Beans, bean meal, the downside leaders, although corn and wheat did their best to hold close to unchanged. A couple of cents lower there. Good rally in the cattle market. Watching the outside markets very closely as well with geopolitical concerns. A lot of news on Wall Street this week. Plenty of uh, plenty of things to talk about. Joining us now, John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing here for Market Analysis today. John, thanks for being with us. And um, you know, I'll start uh, with the the outside market risk, uh, the rising tensions between Israel and Iran. We saw that play out in the news over the weekend. Largely, can it kind of came back in on Monday, and it seemed like it didn't overly affect the markets. I, I guess is that your assessment of how we kind of traded the, at least the grains and the crude oil on the day Monday, John? Yeah, I would say so. I was not say it was a non-event, but at least in terms of the marketplace, it seemed like a non-event. And I do think that was some of the strength we saw in the grains on Friday and some of the markets in general was just some risk off trade, fearing that something could escalate over the weekend. Obviously, it did. You know, there's a big part of me kind of was glad it was on Saturday. You know, that would happen on a Thursday night or whatever during trade. It would have been interesting to see how the market would have really handled it. You know, crude oil's had a heck of a run. And the fact that things didn't seem to want to go any further than that point, plus just where we are in the calendar here a little bit, seemed to put a little bit of a break on that crude oil contract. Now, we'll see how we close. We're rallying a little bit as we get into the end of the day here. You know, so maybe the things are not totally out of the woods. But I just think that just lack of, I don't want to say concern, lack of follow through, lack of whatever in terms of that geopolitical situation brought that money flow back into the green markets on the negative side, you know, here today brought some money buying back into the cattle market today. Uh, so, you know, I think it was all part of a, just being tied together with that event that uh, was, you know, kind of known was coming, but we didn't know exactly, you know, as it occurred over the weekend. Well, and these grain markets, uh, funds uh, selling beans and bean meal, it looked like on Monday. I know the recent commitment to traders report to uh, maybe added to their net short and corn, it looked like. And, and speaking of corn, we got a sale to Mexico, old and new crop on Monday. I, I think if anything, that maybe helped the corn market hold firm, uh, but it wasn't something that necessarily gave us a lot of bullish momentum uh, uh, with that sale on Monday. So it just largely felt like no fresh news to really drive these grain markets, John. Yeah, very much so. You know, I mean, the market's focus now is starting to turn towards planting weather. You look at the 8 to, 10, eight to 14 day forecast, above normal temps for the majority of the Corn Belt, maybe above average on the precip side, but we'll have to see how that plays out. But at least it looks like a window is coming here to get this crop in the ground. I think that's something weighing on both the soybeans and corn markets right now. You know, as, as you kind of mentioned, we did get that sale to Mexico, but those are fairly routine. They're really not market movers. You know, we expect corn sales to Mexico and the fact they split a little bit off in 24, 25 is great. Uh, but at the same time, again, not a major load in terms of the size of that sale. So, again, it was just a very routine purchase. You know, as one end user just wanted to step in and cover some supplies. So, you know, so with that, again, the market just is looking for something to push it higher. We just don't have it. We still have a lot of front end supply, you know, was, and I think the most disappointing thing is the fact we had such a good day on Friday and we saw zero, you know, follow through. We were pretty much negative right from the get go last night. You know, and then giving some of those gains back and, and again, finishing towards the bottom half of the range. So now here we are ready to test some support levels. We'll see how tomorrow goes in that regard. If we take out Friday's low um, on the corn market or soybean market, you know, that could open the door again because that'll kind of put that USDA report, the price action after the USDA report back in the microscope. Uh, which obviously, like I said, wasn't very wasn't very good, you know, after that report. So I would say it's a cautious time. Where are we going? Really nowhere. You know, again, in the corn market as we continue to consolidate, you know, kind of holding this 430, 440 area, May, July, December's kind of glued to 470 right now. You know, so we're just not moving a whole lot anywhere, which makes me nervous that when we do break, that we could see some pretty good momentum very quickly. I am watching the end of the month here. Here comes that, that May basis contract time frame again. That's some, one of those mm -hmm. things that's a concern to me. 
you know, so I'm staying on the defensive for the next couple of weeks, especially if guys got stuff in the bin, just to make sure we get some protection here, as well as just getting some things going in 2000 or uh, December 24. You know, we still got good value on the board. And let's just hope we do get some puts here and kind of hope we're wrong. If we're not, we got some good defense in. So that's where we're at. You know, we go over the soybean side of the equation today. You know, we got the crush data. Again, another record yeah. for the month of March. A little bit less than maybe the market was anticipating. Soybean oil stocks a little larger than anticipated. You know, but again, I think that was pretty well priced in. There was no surprise there. In fact, even being a little bit uh, under expectations was a little bit disappointing. So it didn't add any fuel to the fire. In fact, the larger oil stocks probably put some pressure on the market as it, you know, helped push that bean oil price down. Well, I wanted to ask you too, I know you have some good contacts in South America. We are hearing a lot about this Argentine pest pressure in corn. There's even some talk that maybe we could see some pest pressure in Brazil's second crop corn now. I'm getting a little bit of that chatter. Anything you're watching here or hearing from uh, some folks down in South America in terms of the scope of this? And could this be a, a big impact to the market here? Over the next few weeks, I mean, what are your thoughts on that, John? It's going to be a wait and see. And obviously, the move in Argentina was quite alarming. I mean, that was some pretty big cuts there, you know, regarding that stunt disease and leaf hopper, leaf hopper infestation. So, you know, now we're hitting the key windows in that Brazil second crop. We're getting into the drier season. Do we have enough moisture to get this crop through? You know, those will be things that will be closely watched. U.S. corn is still very, very competitive. You know, with Argentina reducing their numbers, helps bring you know helps bring a little bit more supply at least you know activity towards our side of the equation so again still a, an area where u.s corn we should continue to see some movements now ex last week's export sales were awful hopefully that picks back up again it was just a bad week hopefully <clears throat> excuse me but we'll have to watch that going forward uh you know right now it's a part of the market i think keeps corn supported my biggest concern is still the 5 billion bushels of on-farm storage that the grain stocks number put out there. Um, and the fact that we still got a lot of corn that really needs to find a home. And until it gets some ownership on it, it's going to be real hard for this market to really kick in and rally because any rally we get is going to get back with some producer selling, which is going to limit those gains. Well, and I have to think when it comes to producer selling here in the U.S. in this window, everybody's jazzed up about spring planting. We're, we're hitting the field in a big way. It feels like some of that farmer selling is probably going to come to a standstill here for at least the next few weeks. But I also wonder, too, could that cause some basis pops here and maybe some opportunity for farmer selling, John? I think it does. I think that's been some of the trend I've been seeing over the last couple of weeks from talking to guys that all of a sudden they'll get a nice little jump on the basis and be friendly to them and get because the you know everything's kind of tied to a certain price point right now. And if we get too far off it, farmers stop selling. We get too far above it, the end users stop buying. So we're trying to keep some equilibrium uh, really to the point where maybe the cash market's going to run the futures market a little bit more than the other way around here. Uh, so the futures market is going to do what it wants to do on money flow. You mentioned that about the funds again, whole pushing that short position, you know, here in this window. Again, I talked about basis contracts; those are coming up this week, so that's going to be you know next two weeks here. That'll be something that could push this market. You know, we're just still lacking that bullish story. But again, the cash market might act independently based on what is needed in, in that producer's area. So. My recommendation to producers as you get really busy here, make sure you're just still keeping an eye on the cash market because you might get that opportunity to get some corn moved or lock in a little bit of a friendly basis for a short-term delivery. Uh, so just uh, don't fall asleep on that as you, I know you're focused heavily on getting things rolling for the next crop year. Yeah, be a good risk manager in this window. There's other things too that can influence this market. I know uh, just in general, John, a lot of economic data out this week, a lot of earnings data, I should say, on Wall Street that I know the stock market's going to have a keen eye on as well here over the next uh, few days ahead, John. Very much so. And, you know, we've, we've put a heck of a turn on this market in a very big hurry. You know, it just was, what, first April, we were pushing 40,000 plus, and now we're already down under 38,000 on the June futures today. Another fairly big turnout in terms of price. In other words, losing, falling well off its highs for the day. So looks like stock market's a little bit negative. Now everybody says, does that bring money back to the commodity space? Not sure. Maybe it just brings money off the table. And sometimes, uh, 
you know, the, the, you, you see the money move from one to the other, cover losses of one to get pulled money out of the other. So we'll have to see how this kind of plays out here, uh, this time frame. But again, you know, getting a little bit cautious. I haven't liked the economic side of the equation for a while. It's just even though some data is there, it just doesn't feel right overall. And that stock market got itself pretty frothy and it didn't need it to probably get some form of correction in here. And it looks like we're beginning that uh, at least right now. We're joined today by John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing here on Market Talk as we go through Monday's action. Let's go over to Livestock Cattle Trade. A good, solid day there Monday. We needed that, especially after Friday's big sell-off in the, in the cattle, John. I guess, where do we go from here? I, I think a lot of it's probably going to depend on what sort of follow-through we get through the rest of the week. What's your take in this cattle trade right now? Yeah, today was a nice start to the day. I'd like to see us get that June contract through that 10-day moving average, and we kind of fell back under that at the end of the day today. So that was a little bit disappointing. you know. But let's look at two different markets here combined, the hogs versus cattle. We talk about money flow and manage money. Right now, cattle uh, we're sitting about 37,000 long contracts in the live cattle market. That's one of the smallest long positions, realistically, going back to 2020. And, uh, you know, think about the fundamentals that are tied to that cattle market. So it's a point where we got ourselves very oversold here. And I think that was some of the pop that we saw. It's a couple encouraging things, even though cash trade did trend lower again last week, which was expected. Retail values found a little bit of footing. We're back above 300, you know, actually higher on the week in that regard. So we'll see. Uh, to me, cattle market looks undervalued, but like you just said, we need some follow through. I need to get another day. Last week, we seemed to have an up day and then a down day and then an up day. There just and we wound up going nowhere. And, that, and realistically, as, as nasty as Friday was in terms of the sell-off, we were only down 57 points for the week in, in terms of June cattle. You know, So we didn't go anywhere. And you kind of hit a bit of a downside objective for me on Friday. So I was glad to see some turn. Now, like you said, we need follow through. Now going back to the, the money situation, go look at hogs here. Hogs have been rallying hard realistically since the end of December. Manage money, or if you remember, the, those reports were put together on Tuesday afternoon. As on, on Tuesday afternoon, they're sitting around 93,000 long hog contracts. I'm looking back five, six, seven, eight years here, and that's one of the largest positions we've seen. And it was a straight up shot. Now, what do we happen since month, since Tuesday? We lost six bucks in the June contract. So we probably hit our technical top, at least in that time frame. Not a lot of action in terms of price movement today, but now maybe it's a window here where the funds start flowing some money. You know, they went from out of cattle into hogs. Maybe it's coming back a little bit here too now, so we'll have to watch how that plays out. You know, at least a couple encouraging things for hogs. Oh, we've seen good strength in the cash market. The index higher again today, trading $90. You know, that's still under the May contract, which is now our lead month. But over the June, you know, May is not a very actively traded hog contract. And then retail values continue to be strong for pork. So that could at least be a limiting factor in some of this pullback uh, that we couldn't see coming. But again, just watching that money flow, you could just see how aggressively they wanted to own that hog market. And they've been buying it fairly steadily since the middle of December. We were in negative 6,000 contracts in mid-December. Mm -hmm. So we moved over 100,000 contracts in that window to Tuesday's high last week. So to me, that again, shows a bit of a technical top that's probably forming in that hog market as well. Well, and throw it in with hogs and the cattle more so, but I think both and dairy too, just the psychological perceptions in this entire protein sector, a lot of it tied to the bird flu, the H5N1, HBAI, whatever term we're using for dairy cattle here. Uh, as I know there's been a few thrown out there, but just that psychological aspect of consumer demand and more uh, throughout this protein sector just kind of continues to be that that black cloud sort of here, John, that that traders are are nervous about really across the board. I think they're nervous about it, but I think we've also kind of moved through the news cycle a little bit here. You know, milk market last week or beginning of the week found a pretty good bottom, rallied hard, gave it back. And now we're coming back again today. You know, so it feels like we've maybe getting past that point, even though there were more herds in Michigan and there's still some concerns regarding, uh, you know, 
animal movement and containing animal movement. Uh, just, you know, make sure producers just follow the procedures in that regard. But it comes along this way, though. You know, obviously with the things that happened over the weekend, that, that became the focus of the national media. Now we still hear it in the ag talk. You know, I look at the Twitter sphere and it, there's still continuing to be talk regarding, you know, HP, uh, HPAI and, and those cases, but it doesn't seem like it ever really got into that main media stream. So that maybe, you know, had this market, get, the dairy market that has got pushed further than needed to, had the cattle market get pushed further than it's needed to. So hopefully it'll find some equilibrium. Like I said, not that it's gone away, but it's kind of moved out of the cycle. So so we'll have to just kind of watch how things go. I mean, good day in the milk market today. We got a couple penny pop and cheese, boom, we're up 40 cents. You know, it just tells me maybe there's some pent up energy looking to buy that milk market here. Now it feels like we're getting into the top of our range, 17 bucks on top for the May. 16 bucks in the bottom finding some middle middle ground in here so which is a lot better than the you know 1550 from a couple of weeks ago john good thoughts as always anything final you want to share or reiterate to folks here today on the show you know i know for producers it's busy time uh you know things are rolling here guys are getting itchy and we got out in the fields and get things going and uh, things along those lines. I understand that, you know, didn't get, didn't connect with too many people today. I left a lot of messages out there. So don't fall asleep on the marketing side, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. You know, make sure you stay active, at least check in. If you got advisors like myself, don't forget, be afraid to pick up the phone. Cause you know, obviously we're watching it while you're busy, you know, we're here for you in that regard. You know, don't forget to take it, take care of value when there's something out there. It's got some value for it. Jump on it. Make sure you protect yourself. You know, again, still in these grains, the picture is still relatively bearish uh, in the longer term here. And especially if we get off to a good start in the planting window, you know, that could just keep some pressure in this market that, hey, these corn supplies are big. We got a new crop getting in the ground and off to a good start. It's only going to keep that picture that way. You know, so make sure you're just staying active here and staying, staying on the phone, making sure you're making contact with people so you don't fall asleep on these markets while you're running in the fields. Well, if folks have questions, they get settled in the seat of that tractor cab here for spring planting and want to reach out to you there at Total Farm Marketing. How can they get a hold of you, John? Sure. Give me a call anytime. 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email, John H. at TotalFarmMarketing.com. And don't forget that website of ours, TotalFarmMarketing.com. John Heimberg, Total Farm Marketing. Always good to chat, sir. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Have a great week. That's going to do it for the show. Find us at markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at markettalkag and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube.